Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So I guess some of the markets are going to be talking about the shock election win over in Canada where we're seeing some interesting moves in the Canadian dollar or the loony versus a number of other currencies. Um, it was a kind of a shock election result as the previous um, Prime Minister was also known as being quite financially astute, didn't like to spend a lot of money, but was very careful. And the guy who's come in is, uh, is very big into uh, public spending. So we're expecting to see some quite big changes over in Canada as he begins to get vetted in. But I think a, a large number of other traders uh, who are more comfortable with a lot of the more kind of main market FX pairs, they're still talking about China and the GDP figures that came out yesterday uh, at 6.9%, the lowest that they've been since the 2007 start of the credit crunch. And uh, there hasn't been a huge amount of, um, of, of, kind of uh, updates from the Chinese government regarding uh, a cut in interest rates or monetary policy. So the market seems to be a little bit disappointed by the, by the, by the lack of the immediate response there by the Chinese authorities with um, a lot of commodity prices, especially the likes of crude and even gold struggling to get, on, get up a little bit higher, uh, higher um, doing much so far today. So looking at the US 30 to kickstart things off, um, a doji formation yesterday, not a lot of fall through today. We are trading between two ranges, almost got a death cross in the moving averages, while the other technicals are relatively neutral, apart from the slow stochastic, which is massively overbought, but the signal to sell has not yet been generated until we break through that 80% level. So looking at the UK 100, that dampening commodity price aspect is having a bit of a weight on uh, UK equities, which is heavily mining and oil focused. We've been drifting down the last three sessions, including today. Uh, again, in the middle of two ranges with 62, well, maybe 6300 being support and 6415 being potential resistance. It's quite an ugly looking chart still on the UK 100. Moving on to Japan 225, um, we didn't have a huge amount of volatility yesterday. We were down a little bit lower to close, bang on the level. No follow through so far today. Uh, 18,306 has actually been in play for a number of sessions. You can see the many failures it has to break through. Lots of long-legged candles indicative of selling pressure each time it tries to break up. The longer this goes on, uh, the more likely it is that the uh, downwards pressure is going to resume uh, and that would open up 17,496. Uh, but basically we're at the top end of resistance right now and we might have a support cap there on a 21 period SMA. Moving on to dollar yen, which uh, actually had an okay day yesterday following on from Friday's uh, positive momentum. Um, the dollar not doing a huge amount against the sterling or the euro today. Uh, to be fair, it's not really doing much against dollar yen either, but uh, 119.76 looks to be potential resistance, which should coincide with that 21 period SMA as well. All the other technicals are relatively neutral and flattening out, um, but dollar yen does look a little bit top heavy. If volatility returns to the market and uh, fear returns to equities, um, the yen will be bought as a safe haven, so do bear that in mind. So moving quickly on to West Texas crude, which uh, came off yesterday, uh, isn't doing a huge amount today. And I say this quite a lot, but it's still resonating and oscillating around 45.85. It's not really that exciting. Moving on to uh, gold, the yellow metal, um, it's firmly come down to 11.68 so far this morning. Bounced off this level last night. Um, bounced off it again so far this morning, but it's hardly going great guns um, to bounce back strongly today. 12.05 is still longer term potential resistance, but there is a bit of a sell off in, in commodities in general. Um, as the dollar had a little bit of a relief rally yesterday, uh, that's had a little bit of extra pressure there on gold. Um, but this level is very important, 11.68. Regardless if you're bullish or bearish in gold, this is a level that will be very important to you. So do keep an eye on that one. And then looking at Euro dollar, um, We've had three days now of losses, uh, but the candle bodies are getting smaller each time. Um, so that could be an interesting psychological signal that there could be a turnaround potentially. We should also uh, coincide with that 21 period SMA with one spot 1475 being a longer term potential resistance. The other technicals are pretty neutral to be honest, apart from the MACD that's almost got a bearish cross, uh, but it's not crossed over as of yet. Now, finishing all up with GBP USD, uh, looks to be that sloping trend line is providing a little bit of uh, resistance, potential resistance, stopping cable from breaking up higher. But we do have a lot of support on this um, kind of horizontal trend line there. One spot, 54.24, also coincides with the 55 period SMA. The other technicals are relatively neutral, with the slow stochastic almost going into overbought territory. 
Uh, one spot 54, 24 could be a springboard for a move up to one spot 56. Failing that, we could be looking at a move down to one spot 51, 85, should downward pressure resume. So economic data wise, what do we have? Not a huge amount today, to be completely honest. Tomorrow, we've got public finances and uh, crude oil inventories. Thursday brings us, uh, there's an ECB meeting, uh, which will be pretty important. You've got retail sales, unemployment claims. Actually, you've got a fair amount on Thursday. Consumer confidence, existing home sales for the US. And Friday, you've got German PMI and the Eurozone PMI as well. So make sure you don't forget about that. So guys, keep your eye on the chart forum. Lots of cool analysis there from our global teams um, coming from uh, the UK and Australia and Canada. Make sure you make insights part of your layout going forward to get the inside track from our global team as well. And join me again tomorrow to find out what happened next.